Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't done so, why don't you hit that subscribe button for us? Really does help us out. Do you have a GameCube that's not reading its discs very well, or at all? And you're thinking about changing the laser or adjusting the gain to try to get a little bit more out of it? Well, before you do, we have found that a lot of the optical drive boards in these are starting to show signs of bad capacitors. Sometimes they're leaking, sometimes they're not, but more times than not, it's the problem we find. So if you stick around, we'll show you how to get it done. All right, on the bench today, we have a Nintendo GameCube. Um, it came to us today because the owner said it wasn't reading discs. And a lot like many of the other early laser slash disc based systems, they started having laser issues. But in the last few months, I've gotten a handful of these in where I've cleaned the laser, changed the laser, still doesn't seem to help. Now, originally I was kind of checking the box that, you know, it was just uh, an imported laser, um, low quality or reclaimed used lasers. Um, but then I got some lasers from a company that I trusted and we were still having problems. So I started digging in on the optical drive board and Guess what? Starting to find bad capacitors in these. I know it seems to be more of a problem in the handhelds, especially with the game gear. I mean, I buy 10, 15 game gear cap kits at a time, but I think that's what we've got with this one. So we're gonna pop it apart. We're gonna get the optical drive board out and we're gonna test a few of the caps. Um, we have uh, an ESR meter and, and we can check them. And we'll get into that in a minute. But first, let's make sure there wasn't a disc still in this guy. And we'll get into it. To get into the base of the GameCube, should be a game bit as long as somebody else hasn't been in it first. And it's just four screws. And, you know, it's kind of funny. One of the few things or one of the things that I've said um, to the local game stores is that Nintendo could have probably cut these things by 20%, you know, the price of them, if they'd have gotten rid of some of the hardware. So the bottom is, you know, what you would typically see. We've got a few screws, the lid lifts off, no problem, right? But once you're inside, there is a ton of screws. Um, the back just lifts off and so does the front. And we can pull the ribbon cable out if we want a little bit more room to work. So now we still have just a small cube, but as you can see, you know, we got five screws across this side. We've got four screws across this side. Um, we've got four on the back. And, you know, we have five in this side. So there's no reason we need 28 screws <laughs> to hold this little bit together. So it's a little uh, fiddly. So we'll be back when this is open. Okay, all the screws are out around here. I meant to say 18, not 28. But there are a lot of screws in this guy. Um, so now all the screws are out of the perimeter. Um, the fan just kind of lays to the side and this just lifts off the plug underneath. So we can set this whole bit aside for now because this is what we want. So now we still have a few more screws around here and these ones are pretty small. Um, I think they're, oh no, they're still a number one. They just got a very small head on them.
Now I know there's some other videos saying that, you know, you can adjust the laser and, and um, I know there's some debate about that, whether you should turn the gain up or not. And, you know, my feeling on that is if you're doing it safe, matter of fact, here's the, here's the gain pot here. And we can take a reading off it real quick, just for reference. Right now we're showing 183 ohms. Personally, that sounds low, but I don't think anybody's been in this one yet. It, uh, it doesn't look like it had been apart. So I will double check that, but now let's keep digging and get our optical board out. The laser ribbon has a bail that pulls out and then it can slide out. This one's kind of stubborn. You just kind of have to be careful. You got to get behind it with something and then you can, you can pull it straight out like that. Just don't rip it. And we have a few more screws. And I will get a total screw count for you in a moment. Once those are out, we can desolder these two wires. And they're marked, so you don't have to worry about it. You can actually see here on the board where it says red and brown. And now, here is our optical board. We can set our laser aside. All right, so now with all that out, here's the capacitors in question. What I have been finding is that this 220, these 47s, and at least this 100 um, microfarad cap have gone bad, but we will check the others. Now, when you do, when you throw things on the floor, <laughs> no, uh, when you work with a, uh, an ESR meter, you know, a lot of these will have a, a guide and you have to take that with a grain of salt. Um, and there's a lot of other guides out on the market. The, the thing is, what this is doing is it's measuring the internal resistance of the capacitor and it does it with a hundred megahertz signal so it helps isolate anything else out um, these have really been a godsend um, being able to check caps in circuit um, you know originally we'd have to just take them out of circuit and then we could check them with a, a standard meter so this one's all by itself but as you can see we have several of these um, 100, 100 microfarad caps. So we can check them against each other. You know, if we get two that are 0.1 ohm and one that's 4 ohm, well, we know it's bad. Same thing with these 47s. The 220 just wind up replacing. So let's get to it. You have to zero out your leads. There we go. So if we come here on this 100, and we check it, let's see if we get anything off it. 1.03, actually doesn't seem too bad.
but look at that one, 0.03. And if we come back to this one, Point oh four, so this we have two that are similar and one that's high, so that tells me, yeah, we can find out the manufacturing, we can look up the actual spec, but when you have two that are good, two that are similar in value and one that is magnitudes different, well, we can pretty much point our finger at that one. Um, these ones over here, those are two twenties we can take a reference from them. But the thing is, being a different manufacturer, it's almost irrelevant um, because we don't know 0.2. So this one's still magnitudes higher. And like I said, what I've found is it's these four that are the culprit. But we'll come back to these point, uh, these 47s, these small 47s. 0 0 0.06, 0 0.06, 0.07. Now if we come down to these two, ten. <laughs> yeah. So these have are starting to, to give up. Oops. Let's go ahead and short our leads again. I think I will we'll check the short. Okay. They're pretty, still pretty good. Point oh nine. That one's actually still okay. And we'll check these bigger, 6.3 volt. O2. Oh, that looks pretty good. So this one is just, yeah, 10. One, and let's check this 220. 07, so that doesn't seem too bad. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna change these two caps. We're gonna see what happens. So there's a couple ways we can we can attack it. Um, we can use hot air, or since they're really in an accessible point, there's a 100. And here's a 47. Um, since they're accessible, we could really just kind of lift them up off the board. Well, that one was leaking. All right, we'll have to clean it up some. You can see right there, the pad actually lifted, so we'll have to clean the acid.
Okay. This one didn't leak as bad. So, the, um, as you can see here, we have our bands, and that signifies our, our ground. So, all we really need to do, since we've lost this pad, we can share a ground with uh, this one above it. We just have to verify. These all should have a common ground, which they do. Okay, I'm gonna clean up the board a bit. And I'll be right back. All right, so after I cleaned a little bit of the uh, mask away from the board, um, what I found is that this particular ground came back down to this trace. So we'll go ahead and we'll solder our new cap in and we'll use a small piece of 30 gauge wire and we will solder it back to the point where we know we can get a clean connection. So we'll start with our 100 microfarad. Little bit of flux makes everything flow real nice. Make sure it's on. Then we'll come back here. And we will actually tack our wire in place first.
Okay. That should do it. Everything looks good. And since these are surface mount caps, we just want to make sure there's no short underneath this one. And if we're lucky, this guy should boot up again. I'm going to go ahead and put the board in and get us set up. And um, I'll be right back. All right. I didn't button it up the whole way, but I did count our screws. There's actually 32 screws to get into this little guy. Um, and we didn't even pull the main board up. So, like I said, uh, Nintendo's engineers could have definitely saved some money just cutting the screw count down. So let's see. We've got a video, we got some power. We're not gonna run it long enough to have to worry about that. Um, let's see, get a game for it. And, and a controller. It would definitely help to have a controller port though. parts all over the place. All right, so we have a controller port, we have a controller, we have a game. We're on composite. Let's see what we get. We'll shut our lid. Go up to gameplay. There we go. Super Mario Strikers. <laughs> All right, um, I'll finish putting this one together off camera. As you can see, we're working. Um, on a lot of these older consoles, like, like a Game Gear or the uh, Turbo Express, the handhelds, that we know every single one of those capacitors is starting to go bad. Um, it's always recommended to just remove and replace all of them. But, continue without saving. Oops, no, that's not what I mean. But in something like this, I don't know, we don't have enough information. This is kind of a, a new thought or a new issue um, that the lasers aren't needing replaced and we've got a, you know, shorted caps on the optical board. Um, you know, by my meter, all of them were good except for two. Um, and as you can see, there's no issues. There's no buffering. There's no quality issues. It's just reading. So, covers open. So anyway, if you've got a GameCube that's not reading, my advice to you is to start before you adjust that laser, before you try to replace the laser, my suggestion would be to replace at least those four caps that I pointed out early. The 220, the 100, and the 247 microfarads at the bottom of the board. Um, this marks the sixth one I've done successfully by changing those caps. And obviously this morning, um, you know, we were only showing two of them actually being bad. Um, the one was leaking and the one was, you know, the, the trace was bad because of it. As soon as we put any pressure on it, it lifted. 
Now I know some people might be out there yelling at me in the comments saying, I should have used the hot air to lift it properly. Well, my thoughts are, if you've got a surface mount cap that's leaked and it's caused damage to the pad, then yeah, getting it off the board carefully and trying to push that pad into place might be a slightly cosmetically more clean. But if the pad's lifted, the acid has etched it, the acid has eroded it, you might as well get it off the board and solder somewhere that you know is clean and solid, which is what we did. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something new on the GameCube. Um, and, you know, if you have any questions, go ahead and make some comments down below. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. We could really use some uh, support. And um, I'll catch you on our next video. Thanks.